Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Audible. About a year ago now, I released a video on Dinner Party, calling it one of the show's best and most uncomfortable episodes to sit through. And many, many people in the comments were quick to point out the episode they think tops it in terms of cringe comedy, Scott's Tots. For me, season 6 is not a high point for The Office. It's well entrenched into that era where it was still a very solid show, but its best days were a bit behind it. That doesn't mean the show didn't occasionally have a surprise up its sleeve though, and Scott's Tots is exactly that. While many network sitcoms like Friends and New Girl aim to be very pleasant to spend time with, The Office was usually at its best at its most abrasive, when it wasn't content to just be pleasant, but to be actively uncomfortable. That's what Scott's Tots set out to do, and whether you love the episode or hate it, it's hard to deny that it hit that mark dead on. Oh, and it probably goes without saying, but this video will feature spoilers for The Office. For those who don't remember, the A plot of Scott's Tots is about Michael Scott having to break the news to a class of graduating high school students whose college education he promised to pay for that he wouldn't be paying. Michael had done a lot of terrible, stupid things during the show's run, but I think this easily takes the cake. To be fair, he made this promise years earlier, when he assumed at 20 that he would be a millionaire by the time he was 30. That's obviously a pretty crazy thing to promise, but it does fall perfectly in line with who Michael Scott is, especially a younger version of the character who is even more clueless than the man we meet at the beginning of the show. For some viewers, this was just too uncomfortable to watch. This is pure speculation on my part, but I'd be willing to bet that there's no other episode of The Office that's as skipped on rewatches as this one. And I would understand why. More than anything, this episode is attempting to give you a pit in your stomach as you wait for that horrible other shoe to drop. Some people love that kind of excruciating comedy. I know I definitely do, even more so now thanks to shows like Review and Nathan For You. And some other people can't really even sit through it. And I guess with this one, I can kind of see where people are coming from. This is the most cruel thing Michael Scott did during the entire run of The Office. Of course, it being Michael, he didn't do it maliciously or out of any ill will towards the kids. I think he 100% believed, without a doubt in his mind, that he would be able to pay for every single one of those kids' tuitions. Of course, his intentions don't matter at all to the kids in the class who don't get their college tuition paid if Michael did it purposefully or not. And that's a lot harder to stomach than your average Office episode. But honestly, I wish it was the kind of thing the show leaned into more in its later years. Instead of settling into the usual sitcom groove of its characters becoming closer but also far more exaggerated over time, it could have found increasingly more uncomfortable situations to put them in. Because when the show executed that well, like it does here, it injected a real sense of stakes into everything that the later seasons often lacked. Maybe though, I shouldn't be too hard on the later seasons. After all, this episode does a great job of demonstrating how much Aaron, played by future Kimmy Schmidt star Ellie Kemper, added to the show. I think this one actually benefits from it being a season 6 episode, where it's her and not Pam tagging along with Michael to the school. With Pam and Michael, an often funny but usually pretty predictable scenario would play out when it was just the two of them outside of the office. Michael says something stupid or ridiculous, and Pam tries her best to bail him out, or at least to ease the awkwardness for herself. Erin has none of those impulses. She usually breezes past uncomfortable situations without even noticing them. I mean, we see her here singing along to the Hey Mr. Scott song, which I think makes that pretty clear. So without Pam, Michael is forced to face what he has caused head on, and I like how much the show really twists that knife too. Revealing that the school named a room after him, that he knows a lot of the students' names, and that they even prepared a musical number for him. Every step of the way, the show ratchets up the tension between how beloved he is and how terrible it's going to be when he tells them the truth. 
Now, it doesn't have that heightened sense of strangeness that Michael and Jan's horrible relationship in Dinner Party does, but what it does have going for it is the feeling that you're about to watch the freight train of Michael's cluelessness go off the tracks at any moment, and there's absolutely nothing he can do to stop it. It also really helps that Steve Carell was better at playing panicked than just about any other actor on TV. That was something that the show was able to use to its advantage over and over again. I love that even up until the very moment he has to share the news, he's still hoping someone there would bail him out. Asking the students if they had any intuition about what was going to happen next in one last desperate attempt to not have to do it himself. Michael's speech is punctuated by an amazing moment where he offers the kids laptop batteries, which is just about the saddest replacement for full tuition payment that's kind of possible. Did you give it to your wife? No. Am I missing something? I really don't know how it happened, David. I know how it happened. One thing I haven't talked about yet is the B story, which might not be as memorable as Michael's stuff, but was actually much more funny than I remembered. In it, Dwight tricks Jim into giving out an Employee of the Month award to himself in an attempt to get him fired. I remember a lot of people actually took issue with this story when it aired back in 2009. After all, didn't the show go to pretty great lengths to humanize Dwight after he was fired and had to work at Staples for a little bit? I never really bought that reasoning. To me, this makes perfect sense for Dwight. Like, he might be a sad sack at times, and he's not a complete sociopath, but at the end of the day, he is a petty, vindictive, and power-hungry little man. So, it's not at all a surprise that he can't stand the idea of Jim as his boss. I think this little B story also mirrors the Scott's Tots storyline, with the misunderstandings just getting ratcheted up over and over again. First with Jim winning the prize, then Pam being in second place, and finally with the cake punchline. It's maybe not super important, but I think that makes for a smart couple of plots to pair together. In the end, Aaron tries to comfort Michael by saying his false promise at least made the graduation rate higher. It's something, sure, but it's not much. For the most part, the episode doesn't let Michael off the hook for what he's done here. And it shouldn't. Promising to pay for one student's books is a pretty far cry from paying everyone's tuition. It refuses to give him a real happy ending here, and it's one of the few times on the show that Michael's stupidity kind of has real consequences, and I think that's pretty interesting. If The Office is, at least in part, a show about Michael Scott becoming a good person over time through sheer trial and error, this was probably his lowest point. And thankfully, one of the most funny episodes that the show ever produced. I want to know what you thought of the episode though, because I know people's reactions to this episode are just all over the place. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it went too far or is it your favorite of the whole season? I'll be sure to read your comments down below. If you're looking for some more Office content though, I should really recommend probably the single best history of the show out there. The Office, The Untold Story of the Greatest Sitcom of the 2000s by Andy Green. This audiobook dives deep into the making of the show and really gets into the nitty gritty of its creation in a way that nothing else has ever attempted. And you can get it free right now on Audible. I've been an Audible member for years now because they just keep expanding their selection in great ways. Not only is there thousands of audiobooks to pick from, that's kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Now with their Audible Plus membership, you get access to thousands more originals and podcasts. So you can go from a sci-fi novel to a true crime podcast to a self-help title, all on the same app. Honestly, I use this app basically daily, so I can't recommend it enough. If you want to get a free trial, go to audible.com slash midnight or text midnight to 500-500. That's audible.com slash midnight or text midnight to 500-500. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.